Okay, we're, we're going to look at the contribution of two different reflexes to walking. The first one is the stretch reflex. And in this situation, uh, as, the, as the leg is brought back, this muscle, the iliopsis, is stretched. It's stretched by the contraction, uh, and, and this is stretched. And, and what this does, the stretch of that, is going to lead to the excitation, the contraction of that. And, it can, and this is going to lead to then the, uh, the um, hip uh, flexion. So the, the extension of the hip muscle is going to lead to a contraction of that um, hip flexor. And that uh, helps the, the gait trans, trans, uh, uh, transition into the, the forward going, so as the, as the hip goes up. Okay, that's one. And so this is, just, this is just sort of grease on the wheels. This is just helping this, this repeating pattern go along. Um, and the other one is that the uh, is that as you're in the double stance, there's a there's a moment where you're about to trans uh, transfer the weight from one leg to the other leg because the point of going into the double stance is so that you lift this leg. As this leg takes the weight, this one's going to be lifted. But if you've ever noticed, if you're carrying something really heavy. Do you go faster? Do you go as fast as you are if you don't carry that something heavy? Well, what happens? If you're carrying something heavy, it's almost as though you get stuck. It's like, yeah, I can't get my leg up. So that's how, you know, that's how an actor is going to convey to you that they've got something really heavy. Is They're going to go really slowly, and it's going to take them a while to get this leg up. And that is due to a weird... 1B reflex. And what I mean by weird 1B reflex is it's an inverted 1B reflex. During walking, and only during walking, the 1B reflex is flipped so that it excites the motor neuron. So that the contraction, an active contraction, is going to lead to more contraction. And only when this contraction is relaxed enough Will you, will you prevent that, that 1B reflex from, from um, requiring you to continue to, to stand on this leg? So only when this is relaxed enough, uh, because it's not carrying so much force, can it relax and, and be lifted up. All right, so this prevents you from uh, lifting up this leg before you're able to, to, uh, to, to sustain the weight. Um, on the other leg. So these are two reflexes, and the, the most important take-home message here is not, not the specifics of that, but the fact that, uh, two facts. One is that these reflexes aid the whole package of the central pattern generator so that your walk looks uh, normal. And this, the second point is simply that um, Reflexes are meant to be, to be changed. They're meant to be modulated, and that happens all the time. Okay, I would just want to end by thinking about walking through the uh, life cycle. And what I've shown here is, is a toddler. What you notice is that the, the kid is looking down. Now, we can walk with our heads up, but this is a kid that's just learning to walk. The other thing that you notice is that there's very little movement in the arms. And so... Um, when, when a baby first starts to, before this, this kid's walking. They're, the kid is actually walking. But when a baby first starts to, to walk, all they're doing is shifting their weight between their two legs. They're not really propelling forward. They're just learning. There, there are two pieces to walking. There's the, the balance, the posture, the staying upright, and then there's the gait. And the first thing that the baby learns is just to, to make sure that they don't fall. So they're the gait thing is really minimal. They're just kind of toddling back and forth. And then they start to, to toddle forward, but the gait's not normal. And it takes, it takes a year or so. By the age of three or four, gait is fairly normal, but, but it's not in, in its fully developed form because the arm 
is not going to uh, start to be in, in counterphase to the leg uh, for a little while. It, but in the adult, eh, there's all sorts of things that are going on here. It's not just the legs. It's the arms going in counterphase. It's the shoulders. And it's the head. Okay? All of this, it's an integrated pattern. And it can go wrong in ever so many ways, which is why watching a person's gait can tell you a lot about the health of their nervous system and their um, musculoskeletal system. The baby who is learning to walk is doing, a, is fulfilling a biological mandate. Uh, I used to think that babies, you know, didn't want to be held because they were sort of, you know, they were squirmy to be annoying. But they're not squirmy to be annoying. They're squirmy because their biological mandate is to, to go and to learn to walk, to teach themselves to walk. And if you calculated how many, the average, um, if you calculated the distance that, it, that the average number of steps a baby takes, if they had adult strides, you're talking about miles on the order of seven, eight miles. They would be walking seven or eight miles a day uh, if they had adult strides. They don't. So they're not trucking that much, but the point being that they're practicing. They're practicing and practicing and practicing. One of the things that they're practicing is uh, what we'll talk about in, in two, uh, after the next series, is the cerebellum. The cerebellum is, is responsible for coordinating all of this uh, posture and gait. And finally, on the other end of the, of the spectrum are older people. And if you think about it, older people have, uh, have a different set of challenges. They, um, their balance is not as good. They might have lost some otoconial mass, so they might be dealing with some uh, constitutive level of disequilibrium. Um, and their muscle mass is probably less than it was when they were uh, a little younger. And so uh, as, as a result, th they might get stuck they might get stuck in the double support. If, they can, if, if all their muscle mass is, is being used just to keep their body upright, then, then the, the progress of walking in such an individual is gonna be very slow. Um, okay, so take home message. Gait is a very important output of the, of the nervous system. It's important to people. It can tell you a lot about a person's uh, nervous system, and it's also going to matter a lot. So people are going to seek help if they if they fall or if they can't walk, um, and, and so on. So gait is a really really important uh, piece of biology to know. Okay, we're now going to go on, and in the next series of lectures, we're going to look at, or videos, we're going to look at descending tracks. <laughs>